Hi, today we're going to talk about Deep Composer. My name is Keisha Williams, and just at a very high level, Deep Composer allows you to generate music using artificial intelligence. So let's start with me sharing with you some of the music that I generated using AWS Deep Composer. Now the cool thing about Deep Composer is that it has an out of the box integration with SoundCloud. So let's jump over to my SoundCloud account and I'm actually presenting from two monitors. So when you see me turn this way, I'm looking at my second monitor. So you should see SoundCloud and I've created this AWS Deep Composer list where I'm adding tracks and tunes inspired by my favorite songs. So let me play you a few of my tunes. The first one I call Cloud Life. Let's listen to that. <laughs> Next, let's listen to Deep Space. You can tell I had fun naming these tracks. That one really does sound like you're out in deep space somewhere. <laughs> and the next one, let's listen to Summer Breeze. And lastly, Higher Heights. So the AI generated music doesn't sound too bad. Let's talk about the process to actually create this music. Now with AI music and with Deep Composer, what I found that it is a fun way to learn about machine learning and generative AI. And so with Deep Composer, it allowed me to learn and play and produce music. And it really brought me back to my childhood from my days of actually playing piano for the youth choir in church. So Deep Composer really brought out the kid in me. Just to tell you a little bit about myself, I've been in IT for the last 25 years, always in a software engineering role, mainly working with Java and web development. So I've served as a software engineer, a technical lead, a software engineering manager, all in just, like I said, the software engineering space. Um, for the last few years, I would say maybe the last three or four years, I've started dabbling or playing around with machine learning. I'm just very fascinated by the technology. I think it's super cool. And you really don't have to be a rocket scientist to understand how machine learning can be applied to everyday life. And so through my dabbling and playing around, I started speaking at conferences, really just trying to share my lessons learned with others so that they wouldn't make the same mistakes that I made. And through that process of speaking and teaching workshops and authoring courses, I was lucky enough to be named an AWS machine learning hero. I also dabble with Alexa. I'm an Alexa champion. In my current role today, I work with a company called A Cloud Guru, and I'm what we call an AWS training architect. We have an online education platform where we teach people about the cloud and we help them prepare for cloud certifications. So that's what I, I do today. A quick overview of what we're going to cover today. I will give you an overview of Deep Composer, then we'll talk about generative AI. I'll show you how to generate a composition. I'll talk to you about training a custom model, and then we'll wrap up with the Q&A. What is Deep Composer? I often get the question, what is it? Is it just a toy? And no, it is not just a toy. It is actually a real keyboard. Uh, but more importantly than that, it is a machine learning enabled keyboard that allows you to generate music. And the keyboard actually connects to a service in the AWS console, and I'll show that to you. And the service, like I said before, it's really an educational tool that helps you learn complex concepts like machine learning and generative AI in a very fun, interactive, and hands-on way. 
there are some advanced features of Deep Composer that require prior coding knowledge, but then there are also simple features that require no coding skills at all. Today we'll go deep with the simple features and then we'll wrap up with some of the more complex features. So how does this process work? The first step is you have this input melody. So you play the melody on the physical keyboard. Now, if you don't have a keyboard, there's also a virtual keyboard in the AWS console that you can leverage. But today I have a virtual keyboard and I'll be walking you through that process. So you input your melody on the keyboard that melody then goes to this pre-trained music genre model. So there is a model in machine learning terms, a model is a collection of trends and patterns found in data and it's represented in mathematical format. So we have this music genre model that understands what, let's say, jazz music sounds like, the different instruments, the different notes, and all of that. So you take your input melody, you send it to this music genre model, let's say a jazz genre model, and now that genre model takes that melody and adds four accompanying instruments. So typical instruments you'll see in jazz if we're using the jazz pre-trained model. And then it takes your melody, it adds the accompanying instruments, and now you have this brand new musical track. And it generates this track based on its understanding of jazz music. And it really produces a unique sound. So let's have a quick demo of producing a musical track. When you first come to the AWS Deep Composer console, this is the screen that you'll see. There are several menu options here on the left hand side. Models shows all of the pre-trained music genre models like jazz, pop, rock, symphony, etc. Compositions shows all of the compositions that you've created. Learning capsules, these are like mini user guides that help you get started with Deep Composer. The most important option here is the Music Studio. When the Music Studio first appears, you will see a screen of your previously created composition. So I'm going to refresh to remove that composition. So if you've never created a composition, this is what the screen will look like. Notice here, out of the box, there are several input melodies. So if you do not trust your musical ability um, on playing with the Deep Composer here, you can select a preloaded melody. So in the list of melodies, they have Twinkle Twinkle Little Star, Ode to Joy, Deck the Halls, We Wish You a Merry Christmas, etc. Down here, you can change the tempo and the pitch. Notice this empty section here. These are the accompanying instruments that the music genre model will add for you. And down here at the very bottom, this is the virtual keyboard. So remember I told you, if you did not have access to a physical keyboard, you can use this virtual keyboard. Now, I actually have the physical keyboard here. And whenever I play a note, you'll see that it highlights that corresponding note on the virtual keyboard. One thing I do want to note, you can use your computer's keyboard to control the virtual keyboard. And if you look on these keys, you'll notice it's showing um, the keyboard letters. So for example, W or M plays a given key. Now, if you have your keyboard and you would prefer to see the notes, the way you would do that, you'd go to settings and you would turn off hotkeys. And now notice here, you actually see the musical notes. Okay. Now let's pick a sample track. Let's do We Wish You a Merry Christmas. And notice now that input melody loads up here. You can click play. And then let's stop it. Now, if you wanted to record your own input melody using the keyboard, 
then you would click record here. That's this red button, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to use, we wish you a Merry Christmas. Now here you pick the generative AI technique and throughout this uh, lesson, we've been talking about GANs, so generative adversarial network. So we'll pick that. And then we'll use MuseGAN. There are two training architectures. MuseGAN, which was created specifically for music generation. And then there's UNET, which uh, people sort of stole from computer vision because when you represent a note on a piano roll, it sort of looks like an image or it can be processed as an image. And so some people use UNET, but today let's just stick with MuseGAN. And now let's select one of the pre-trained models. So let's select the jazz model. And so we are going to hear a jazzy version of We Wish You a Merry Christmas. And so once you um, selected the model, all you do is click on this orange button, generate composition. And it usually takes a few seconds for the AI to take the melody and add the accompanying instruments. And now notice here, it's added three accompanying instruments. We see the names here, a grand piano, bass, and drums. Now let's hear how this sounds. You do that by clicking play. So that is a jazzy version of We Wish You a Merry Christmas. I'm not really sure that I like that. So let me show you how you can change the instruments, how you can disable or enable certain tracks. And when you're trying to create this, this track that actually sounds good, you really have to put on your music producer hat and just play around with different instruments and things like that until you find something that actually sounds good. So let me show you, you can actually disable or turn off a given track by clicking on this button here. And so now I've turned off the piano and the bass. Let's play it. So you hear the, the drums along with the melody. And you can also change the instrument. So if you click on this button here, it shows you all of the instrument types. So let's pick, I don't know, let's go to ethnic and let's pick a fiddle. I have no idea how this is going to sound. And let's turn off the other tracks and let's play. Ooh, no, 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 turn that off, turn that off. Let's try uh, maybe a reed instrument and let's try a baritone sax. Let's see. Let's turn off the other ones just so we can hear how it sounds. And that's typically what I will do. I will turn off each track and I'll play around with different instruments until I find one that sounds good with the melody. And then I'll add in the next track until I and change the instruments until I find one that sounds good with the melody. So it's a lot of fun playing around. So we'll take uh, one more try and see how it sounds with the sax, but then I'll move on to the next topic because you get the idea of, of what you'll actually have to do. No, I don't like that either, but that's how it works. So you'll have to play around with changing the instruments um, to really get something that sounds good. You may have noticed that the console only supports rock, pop, symphony, and jazz, but what about other musical genres? For example, the first four tracks that I played for you, those were generated through a custom reggae music genre model that I produced. And this is where coding skills are needed. And so this example that I'm going to show you is one of the more complex examples of using Python code. So yeah, I used reggae. I love reggae. And I decided to train my own custom model. So let me walk you through what that process looked like. 
So first, I had my reggae MIDI files. Now, a MIDI file is a musical file produced by software that contains the notes to play. So I came with all of my reggae files, and this is the training data that the machine learning algorithm is going to study to try to learn from and try to find trends and patterns and really understand the breakdown of reggae music. So that's that training process. During the training process, because I'm using generative AI, you'll see that there are two models involved. The first model is what's called the generator, and that model acts actually produces the music. And then you have the discriminator, and the discriminator is responsible for evaluating the music produced by the generator. So this is what that process looks like. You have the generator, and the generator produces this deep fake reggae track. Now, if you're not familiar with the term deep fake, you may have seen these videos on the internet of faces superimposed over famous people or a famous person saying some phrase that you know they would never say. It's all of that is fake video that's created using generative AI. And the term deep fake combines deep learning, which is a form of machine learning with the word fake, so deep fake. So we have this generator, it produces this deep fake reggae track. And now I want to point out that this track is not just a replica of the training data. It is actually something new. So that is really what makes generative AI so exciting because it gives a machine creativity. So we have the generator, it produces this deep fake, and then we have this discriminator called, called the critic. And this critic is responsible for critiquing how far off this deep fake is from the original training files. And so the generator and the discriminator, they have this conversation and it may go something like this. The generator says, hey, listen to this reggae track I just produced. And the discriminator is going to say, dude, I listened to that and it sounds fake. You need to change this, 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 this. And that discriminator gives that feedback to the generator. So the generator takes all that feedback and now produces a different version of the deep fake. And the discriminator listens to that version and he's like, dude, that sounds like reggae. You did a great job. And so that process continues over and over multiple iterations until finally we have this generator model that is so good at producing this deep fake that the discriminator can't even tell the difference. And so at the end of the process, we keep the generator model to use that to produce our music going forward. The discriminator model is tossed out. So when we talk about training a custom music genre model, I'll use a tool called SageMaker. Now, SageMaker is, think of it as machine learning as a service. It gives you Jupyter hosted notebooks. It gives you access to powerful training instances. So you have access to GPUs. And it also allows you to host your model through an API endpoint. Now let's talk about training a custom music genre model. This is where the real power comes in as far as using creativity and producing something that actually sounds good. For example, the four music tracks that I played for you at the beginning of the talk use this method that I'm about to show you. And this is the more advanced method. So it does require that you have prior programming experience. And in this example, I'm going to show you Python code in a Jupyter notebook. And all of this code that I'm going to walk through is freely available as a part of the A Cloud Guru uh, Train It Again Maestro web series that I created. And so I've loaded all of the code to GitHub. And there are a lot of cells here. And so for the interest of time, I'm just going to point out some of the more important concepts. And later on your own, you can go back and just really go cell by cell and look at this code. So the first few cells, I'm setting up the environment. I'm importing the different libraries that I'm going to use. 
What I want to note here is this Pi Piano Roll Library. This library really makes all of this possible. And it is a library that allows you to work with MIDI files from within Python code. And it's called Pi Piano Roll. Here I'm configuring TensorFlow, I'm setting up the directories, and now there's a section where I'm actually going to review the MIDI files. So whenever we talk about machine learning, data is the most important piece. And so you really have to understand your data and it has to be in a format that a machine can learn from. And so first, in order to actually understand a MIDI file, I've uh, drawn this diagram here. So whenever you use Pi Piano Roll to parse or read a MIDI file, it produces what's called this multi-track object. And just like the name, this multi-track object contains multiple tracks that represents the instruments in that MIDI file. So for example, a bass, an organ, a clavinet, guitar, etc. And so you have the tracks, you also have the tempo, the downbeat, the beat resolution, and the name. Now, within a track, what does a track look like? So that's what the second image here is showing. So for the bass track, this is what it looks like. There's a program number. Now there is a general MIDI specification that gives a program number, which is like a unique identifier for each instrument. And it's the same across all MIDI files ever created. So for example, this bass has a unique identifier or a program number, number 36. So that represents the bass. So it has the program number, it has whether or not it's a drum instrument. And then notice here, it's going to have an array of piano rolls. So these are NumPy arrays that represent the, the musical notes that are played. Down here in cell four, I'm just looping through all of my MIDI files and printing out the different instruments. And that is very important because the GAN architecture that I am using to train this music genre model only supports four instruments and it has to be four, exactly four, no more, no less. And what I did, I just went through all of my MIDI files, understanding the different musical instruments in those MIDI files. And then I went through this process of only pulling out the piano rolls for the four most popular instruments in reggae music. And so this is what this is showing here. It's the program numbers for all of the piano type instruments, for all of the organ type instruments, for all of the bass and guitar type instruments. So at a high level, I'm going to just pull out all of those instruments out of my MIDI files, and then I'll go through a process of merging them, condensing them, and then storing them in this final reggae underscore train NumPy file. So that's the final file that I'm passing to the GAN architecture to train and produce this reggae model. And so, and that's what I'm doing here in cell six, I'm merging. And then in cell seven, I'm reshaping, I'm shaping the data to make sure it's in the proper format. And then I'm outputting here for each instrument, the instruments, that, I'm sorry, for each track, the instruments that I am keeping and the instruments that I'm skipping. So let's scroll down. And then here, I'm actually just reviewing the training data and these are the piano rolls and notice they are represented in pitch and time format and it kind of looks like an image and remember I told you that there is a particular architecture called the UNET architecture that we the industry kind of stole from computer vision and used it to generate music and that's why because this piano roll kind of looks like an image. And so the computer can use computer vision to process. And so down here, I'm preparing the data set and I'm building the model architecture. And notice here, I'm using that UNET architecture that I mentioned to you before. And I'm just going through, I'm going to skip over all of this. This is where I'm building the architecture for the discriminator, that discriminator model that I mentioned to you sometimes called the critic. So 
let's go down to the actual training piece. Let's find the training. Okay, here we go. So let's train our model. So during the training process, when you run this code based on the number of iterations that you've defined here in cell 21. So I'm saying loop for 200 or go over the data set 200 times. Now in a real world scenario, this needs to be closer to 3000. But because SageMaker comes with a very high cost, I'm trying to keep my personal costs down and I just did it for 200 iterations. And so that means the learning algorithm is going to go over the data 200 times, trying to find trends and patterns. And it's going to have that same scenario that I shared with you with the generator model and the discriminator model kind of working together to make the generator model better. And you'll see the images for each iteration update here. So that's the training process. And at the end of that, remember I told you, you are left with this generator model. And so down here, once you have the generator model, you then pass your melody to that model. And that process is called inference. It's when you take your melody, you pass it to the model, the model now generates this new track by adding the accompanying instruments. And that's what I'm doing here in cell 29. I'm passing in this me melody, I'm trying to highlight it. It's this one love melody that I actually played on the Deep Composer keyboard through the AWS Deep Composer console. And then I was able to download that MIDI file and then I uploaded it to my Python notebook. And so you can take that same process. But then you take your melody, you send it to the model to actually produce this new track and it stores it in wherever you um, defined earlier on as the destination path. So what's next for you? I recommend that you check out my free web series on a cloud guru. Let me show you that page. So here's a quick look at my free web series on the A Cloud Guru platform, Deep Composer, Train It Again, Maestro. And we have six episodes planned. We've only released the first three, and it really deep dives into what we talked about today. And you may say, well, I don't have an A Cloud Guru account. The videos are also available for free on YouTube. Next, AWS has this competition called Chart Busters. The first competition is called Bach to the Future. So definitely try it out, try generating a composition and then entering it into this competition. And I definitely wish you luck. I've also authored this article on the AWS machine learning blog, and it goes into deep detail about preparing your data for the machine learning process so that you can train a custom genre model. And it really deep dives on what we talked about today. Now let's open the floor for Q&A.